What is going on, everybody? King Recon here for Recon's Peace, episode 24. Um, before we get into anything else in this week's episode of the Recon's Peace, rest in peace, Unsho Ishizuka, man. You know, JoJo and to a certain extent, One Piece as well, man. And most certainly Tekken would not be the same without this man's legendary voice dog. You know, I remember when my friend Josh first caught up to Marineford in the anime. And every single time that we would see each other, we would do the Oh to 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 Ben Beckman. And we did that nonstop for like a year. Because it was it was just such a legendary scene and the way that that uh, Kizaru's voice actor, you know, Shizuka handled it made it that much more legendary. Oh, da, da, da. And, uh, looking back on Jojo, the, oh my god! Holy shit! I mean, come on, man. Old Joseph Joseph, Hermit the Purple! I mean, all, all the legendary comedic scenes with Joseph. And then Hey Hachi from Tekken, man. And it's crazy because, spoiler alert, in, in Tekken 7, Heihachi dies. And who would have known that after Heihachi died, his voice actor would have died as well. Man, dude. You know, the voice of Heiji from Gintama. The voice of, um, of what's-her-name's father from, from, from Kaito Kid. And, uh... And of course, Hercule from Dragon Ball as well, man. And a lot of other role, uh, roles as well. Hohenheim from FMAB. But for me, those three roles in Kizaru, Joseph Joestar, and Heihachi, man. I mean, the man was a legend, bro. An absolute legend, dog. Like I, like I said before, Joseph Joestar's character is so iconic because of that voice right now, you know? In, at least in terms of of, of that version. Because Joseph Joestar had two legendary voice actors. You know, he had Sugita for his younger version. And for his older version, he had Ishizuka, man. And Kizaru's voice was always such a central part of his character. One of my favorite voice actors um, for One Piece. One of my favorite voices for the series, for sure. It just fit him so well, man. And um, it's going to be really, really tough. And really hard. We won't. We won't wait too long to see what his new voice is gonna sound like. Uh, this is definitely gonna be tough to fill his shoes, man. We're, 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 but we're gonna get it pretty soon when Chapter Nine O Seven drops. We're gonna be hearing his voice in the anime again. But man, bro, you know the world lost a great man. I didn't know him personally, but by God, his talents were incredible. So rest in peace, Unsho Ishizuka, and thank you for providing your voice for some of my childhood favorites and some favorites that I recently just got into. You know, thank you for being Joseph Joestar, thank you for being Kizaru, and thank you for being Hey Hachi, man, from Tekken, dog. God, man. Rest in peace. What a great voice. Now then, let's get down to business, man. Volume 90. The cover for that legendary volume that would probably end up being in my top favorite One Piece volume. Somewhere in there, man. The cover that we had been waiting for has finally been revealed. And on that cover, ladies and gentlemen, you have Shirohoshi, Cobra, Robert... D. Lucci, Sabu, Rebecca, Mansherry, Garp, Karu, Vivi, Leo, Kuma, Bonnie, and Wapple. And then right in the center of all of them is the mother flipping king dog. Yo, it's such an awesome looking cover. And then behind them, you have the empty throne 
and it's just it's a gorgeous cover man it's a gorgeous cover i'm pretty sure that this is going to cover from chapter 901 to 909 or from 901 to 910 i think it's going to cover from 901 to 909 if that is the case this is regardless of what it, of whether it's from 901 to 909 or from 901 to 910 it's going to be legendary it's going to be legendary according to the official one piece website it's supposed to come out on september 4th and the title's going to be called sacred mari joa which is based on um uh, the title for chapter 906 you know the giant straw hat chapter so man this is gonna my hype for this volume was already extremely high because I'm really excited for volume 89 and it has an excellent cover. But this is covering some reverie content. Be, this is covering end of whole cake greatness, reverie greatness, and then Wano greatness. So this is bound to be a fantastic volume and I cannot wait to own this. Uh, out of out of all the volumes that are incoming, this is definitely the one I look forward to owning the most. It's definitely gonna be one of the volumes that I have. I'm, I probably might, um, I might put down the Alabasta volume that I have up there. You guys know how I have volume 61 and I have volume 23 uh, in almost all my videos all the way up there next to my pop figures. I probably might take down volume 23 and put up volume 90 whenever I, I finally get my hands on this because this is going to be really, really awesome, dude. I cannot wait for this volume to reread all of that in beautiful volume format, man, right in my hands. I'm going to flip through the pages, seeing Instant Messenger Sama, Shanks and the Goro say, being able to see Kaido and Big Mom, being able to see, you know, the 1.3, uh, 1.3, 1.5 Bill Awesome Sauce, the end of Whole Cake with all those feels, the Revolutionary Army, the beginning of Wano, the legendary double page spread of seeing Wano for the first time. I cannot wait to own all of this in volume form, man. The hat, getting that amazing double page spread of Shiro Hoshi looking out and actually seeing the sun. For the oh, man, dude. I'm a, my body's ready, dog. My body's ready to own this volume, man. So volume 90 coming out in, in, in uh, September 4th in Japan. Looking forward to seeing what, what kind of numbers that does. I'm pretty sure it's going to... It's gonna. A lot of people are gonna go out and buy that volume. So, looking forward to seeing stuff. We're gonna get. I'm probably pretty sure first week, opening week's gonna have over 1.5 million um, copies sold. It would not surprise me. It's, it has legendary content within it, and um, I'm looking forward to seeing how how well it does. But I can't wait to own it, man. It's gonna be sick. The, the volume cover, just looking at it, makes me want to put it back here, dog. The empty throne, bro. Volume 90. The cover has finally been revealed, and I can't wait for it, man. Ladies and gentlemen, we have four new Jump Force characters. Four new Jump Force characters that were confirmed yesterday. We have Gon Freaks and his legend. Dude, I've been waiting to use that form for so long. Like if you read Hunter Hunter or watched Hunter Hunter, you know what form I'm talking about, man. So, Anarch Gon is playable. He's so cocky. He's playable. My main man, the black leg, Mr. Prince, the hunter, the goat, Ben Smoke Sanji is playable. And then the legend, the goat of Zehahaha himself. Marshall D. Mother Flipping Peach, the Black Beard Dog. Confirmed! Confirmed! I cannot wait to see gameplay in all, all, all these guys, man. Now, I have a for sure go to Monster Trio team in Luffy, Sanji, and Zoro. I for sure can't wait to do matchups with like Blackbeard and Aizen on the same team. That'll be so much fun to do. Being able to use Hisoka because in J-Stars, you're only able to have him as a support character. Now you're able to actually use them. So I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of techniques and combos Hisoka will be able to do in the game. Um, freaking goodness, man. <sighs> My man, bro. Goon. And in that form, guys, you guys know what form I'm talking about. And the fact that I'm able to finally use this form in-game, in a video game, is going to be so amazing, man. I cannot wait. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be awesome sauce. So right now, off the top of my head, I can think of, let me see. So we have Luffy, we have Zoro, 
We have um, we have. Let me see. Luffy, Zoro, Goku. We've got Naruto. We've got Sasuke. We've got Frieza. We've got Ichigo, Rukia, Aizen, Blackbeard, Sanji, Gon, and Hisoka. I believe that's 13 characters so far confirmed for this game. And we just need to see gameplay for the characters that I just talked about. I know from what I've been hearing at the end of this month or somewhere soon at Gamescon, we're supposed to get another massive revelation for, for Jump Force. So um, I'm not sure if this is the reveal that they were saving for that, or if. But, but then again, they revealed it in V Jump, so I'm pretty sure it might not be the reveal, and they actually might have something else up their sleeve. So I'm looking forward to seeing what other characters they announce. But dude, just having these four characters in the game already has me extremely excited. I really hope they put in Killua. I love me some Killua, man. I really do hope that they put Killua in the game. Um, I do hope that they. Uh... I would love if they put the King in the game, man. I really would, bro. But if not, if I can only have a third, I'll take Killua. And then, um, for sure, when it comes to One Piece, now they have four characters. Together they have the, the, the monster trio, and they have Blackbeard now. Um, this could very well be the only characters that we have from One Piece, but Ace is so popular that we could definitely have him in the game as well. Um, the thing with Bondi is that they know that all of us would probably be willing to pay DLC for a lot of characters. So a lot of characters that we could be on our wish lists um, could very well be DLC, which I don't mind. I wouldn't mind paying DLC for a game like Jump Force that would allow me to play as my favorite characters across so many different franchises. So we'll see what happens there, man. But so far, for the characters that have been announced, I am super excited. I cannot wait to see Sanji gameplay, man. I can't wait to see the Sanji gameplay. I gotta stand up for this, though. I can't sit in this chair. I cannot wait to see this Sanji gameplay and the Blackbeard gameplay. I'm pretty sure the Blackbeard gameplay is going to be pretty... um. Pretty similar to how it was in Burning Blood. But I can't wait to see the Sanji gameplay, man. I want to see Hell's Memories. I, I, I ah, man, it's going to be so sick. I can't wait, man. My monster trio, bro, all together in one game. That's going to be, ah, man. It's going to be sick. I'm looking forward to seeing gameplay from them when it comes to Jump Force. I'm looking forward to seeing how, how all these characters are going to play because we've never had that version of Gon in a game before uh we've never ha i've never been able to play as hisoka in the game because um i have the only hunter hunter game that i've played is uh, sort of is j stars you know playing as going and kill one and hisoka support and then i've used sanji and blackbeard multiple times before but not in jump force and apparently we have a new stage from new york as well coming into so looking forward to seeing all of that man hopefully they release a gameplay trailer sometime within the next month including all these characters that'd be pretty nice and then looking forward to seeing more characters being announced i know viz is currently promoting and pushing jojo i know that gold uh, golden wind uh, ventorero is gonna start up in october so i'm pretty sure they might have a jojo announcement coming uh soon sometime here in the in the near future but it was crazy because i did not expect them to reveal more one piece characters so early like i, I was expecting them to reveal characters from other series but no they said man we're, 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 we're gonna promote the best-selling manga in history man so Look forward to seeing uh, more from that, and I can't wait to play this game, man. It's going to be so awesome, Sauce, being able to have all these dream matches finally taking place across so many different series, dog. It's going to be sick, and I really can't wait for it, man. Jump Force Greatness. So I want to have a, a, a small discussion about Chapter 914. I won't be able to go as in-depth as I wanted to because I want to record this before I go to work today. But I'm going to open up here the... The chapter right here on the side so if you hear any clicks i'm testing on my new microphone so if you hear any clicks in the background i really apologize if it uh, if it bothers or anything but um i just want to talk about a couple of things uh because i really did enjoy this week's chapter of the best selling manga in history um number one when it comes to tama and uh and this entire storyline and situation of her getting food finally and being able to eat again it really brought me back to uh the when luffy and zoro first met and i'm really happy that my friend my man francisco silva post um showed this comparison because it really is uh once again oda showing everything's going back to to its roots and it's just like old times man and he's he's been doing this quite a lot in wano so far but whenever i saw that comparison i said wow dog wow man even even to that even to, you know, whenever Zoro was initially, whenever, whenever, because, you know, when Zoro was initially introduced, he was introduced as like this all bad dude, 
that um, he was locked up and they were about to execute him. And we saw how kind his heart was whenever he was willing to eat that rice ball, even though it was disgusting. And even though it, it, it probably would take out a whole bunch of sand and everything, my man ate it, bro. He ate it and it, it really showed us as, as viewers how kind Zoro's heart is. And I love that scene so much, man. And of course, you know, Lupin and Zoro get together after that and they start the adventure. But even going as far as that to tell a similar story now with, with, with the little girl, you know, the opposite. Whereas that last time it was Zoro and this time it's the little girl. And this little girl has something, something you know, that, that warrior's pride and that samurai's pride. And it's, it's really interesting, man, how Oda decided to, to tell that backwards this time. And I really, really liked it. Um, going right here on to, let's see, uh, going on here, over here into page four. Once again, man, it is <laughs> the, the comedy with it's a warrior shame, it's a warrior shame, I need water of the river. Really awesome. I love Tama, man. Ta Tama was so much fun. Um, Zoro, once again, flexing on Kiku, yo. Flexing, dog. Now, the Kiku situation is very, very interesting. Let me go ahead and, and talk about that. Let's go to page, I believe that was 16. Yes, page 16. Um, so initially, I thought this was going to be a gag that uh that was gonna that was gonna be a part of her character this whole i am thing and referring to herself uh in the way that a male refer a male samurai refers to himself and um and after skimming through it and after really sitting on it all night and waking up today reading a couple comments like i i read this one comment um and i talked about this at the end of the last video but i've put more thought into it as well so i received this comment by random person on my last video shout out to random person uh, verbatim, it says, the way the way I read it, I felt that Okiku addressed herself that way is the male samurai I am because she believes she is just as good as a male samurai, if not better. I believe she does it as a confidence type thing rather than her being a male or whatever, but that's just my take. And I like this. I really do because I was talking about yesterday how um, instead of this being a whole uh, supposed Bellabite situation or a bonk of whatever, instead of... I really like the idea of one of two things happening here, and they're probably going to be intersecting, but I would love if Oda were to tell a story, because if we remember back to uh, the roots of of Zoro and, and Kuina's relationship, where Kuina really wanted to, be, like, she wished that she had been born a man, so that way people would take her serious when it came to the art of, of the sword, because she continued to hear how, like, a woman be, wouldn't be able to do this, a woman wouldn't be able to do that. And since Oda's going back and really, you know, taking stories he's told before, but reversing them and going more in depth with them, I would love if if we had a story like that, but with Kiku. And I think that's that is the that that's where we're going with this. Now I saw a picture that Hazzy posted in Discord earlier that in the initial picture of the samurai of Wano, there was there was one character that looked really, really similar. Really, really similar to um to kiku to the way to the way that she looks so oda must have had this planned uh before of course but um anyways going back to to, to the to the initial point what about if kiku you know growing up had that similar mindset to kuina except nothing was going to stop her and you know we could have a mulan-esque situation where she is forced to you know undertake this role as faking fa faking her her gender as being a male uh, entering the Wano military, becoming a samurai of Wano, but they don't even know that 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 that, that, that she's a female. Um, and she goes out and, and does do all those things, and still to this day, she still main, main, maintains those mannerisms of calling herself a male, you know, a male samurai. And and uh, I think that would work as well. But through a comment that I received for the by random person, as in like she believes she's just as good as a male samurai, if not better. And it's a confidence type of thing. I love that. Because what about if instead of her faking her way into in, into the Japanese military and, and, and becoming a male, what about if you had something else? Whereas she is just that strong. Kiku is just that flipping goat at using a blade that she refers to herself as that and no one can stop her because no one's strong enough to stop her. You know, like... The only reason why she is considered to be, or or like the only reason why she considers, or, or how how do I, how do I word this? Like, she considers herself to be on the same level as the men, but 
and, and, and like like random person had said, if, if not better, and that's what she refers to herself as the I am thing. Because maybe whenever she was younger, she was ridiculed for that. And because she he got she got so strong to the point to where no nobody could no longer deny her skills that she just kept referring to, to herself as this. Like, yeah, I am a samurai in the way that a male would. Like saying, I'm, I'm better than them. Screw that, dog. Like anybody who tries to try me, I don't care if you're male, female, animal, it don't matter. You're catching hard else. And it was, that was an awesome panel. But the more I look into it and the more I think about it, the more this has massive implications to how important this is going to be for the overall story of Wano. I cannot wait to find out more about Kiku because just already by that, I already have so many theories going over my head, man. You know how every character has that flashback to them and that backstory to them. Kiku, for, I mean, I think I want to know more about Kiku's past than I have for a uh, character in quite some time. I think I haven't been wanting to know a character's past this much. Um... In terms of like within just one story arc of One Piece, like those one story arc characters of One Piece, since probably the Toy Soldier in um in Dress Rosa, whenever we whenever we find out Kairos's backstory, uh, that that was the last time that I really 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 wanted to know a character's past, uh, this this badly, man. Like at the beginning of an arc, because of course still to this day I can't wait to see more from yeah Neko Mushi and Inurashi. And, and, and what have you, and, and uh, Katakuri and um, and Brulee's was beautiful as well, Pudding and whatnot. But in terms of characters that we had just met, Kiku, man, I cannot wait to find out more about this backstory, Doc. Because there's going to be so many different implications, man. I saw, I didn't get to see the video, but I saw that um, Joy Boy was, uh, made a theory on the Seven Samurai of Wano. And I haven't watched the video yet, but that would be awesome sauce, especially if she's one of the Seven Samurai. But regardless of how Oda decides to do this, now this has already been set in place. That, that she likes to refer to refer to herself as a male samurai, indicating, like Random Person said, that she believes that she is on the same level or better, or at one point in time she, you know, faked her the the her actual identity in order to get in and become a samurai because that is her dream or goal or whatever the case may be. I just cannot I can't I, and I'm pretty, I might be I might be completely wrong. And there was something else, you know how Oda always breaks my ankles. But what I'm trying to get to is this is the stuff that I love about One Piece, man. The mystery and the history of these arcs. And I can't wait to find out exactly what made her like this. And I can't wait to know more about Kiku's past and Kiku's story. This entire page, this page, um, uh, page uh, 16, is, is awesome sauce. I mean, the fact that in the page before, whenever she grabs the blade and just takes... Uh, take, goes on, takes the man-dog pair, uh, bear-dragon thing and just runs and goes on with this thing without even a second thought just grabs the blade and just goes in a like swimmer right and then she states she grabs on a notebook and says we should be heading towards the government official district there are three headliners that reside there hawkins holdem and speed now this is really really it's it's odd right it's odd because she has this notebook and she opens it so she obviously has a lot of information when it comes to this place but it says it says she's only been here for a month now, does this mean that she was somebody that was always trapped in the capital? Or does this mean that she came from outside? Because if Kiku came from outside, well, but then at the same time, at the same time, no, hold on, bro. Yo, let's just say, because I was about to say if she came from outside, then no, no, no. But what about if she was stuck from the capital? What about if she is... Like, directly connected to the cap. Yo, we know how much Oda loves his princesses. Nah. I don't know, dog. Because the way that she has this notebook, it's like she's never been here before. Or she's never um been to these locations before, but she's reading it from a notebook. And this notebook might be given to her by somebody else who has gone through this before. So what about... If instead of everything that I just said, what about if she's like, yo, what about if she's a princess or, or the daughter? Maybe maybe she could be directly, um, you know, Kiku Odin or something, dog. Like, yo, Oda could play around with so many different things with this, man. Uh, and then I'll continue to say, on top of that, there are around 30 people who have gained some abilities from some kind of mysterious artificial fruit. A notebook, who exactly are you? It's like, I am a samurai. There's so many different things that Oda can do with this, man. Like, taking, taking the entire... 
uh, runaway princess story that he's that he's told before, but this time incorporating it with 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 um, wanting to enter the military as a samurai, faking her or fa faking her identity. I mean, there's so many things that that that, that uh, Oda can go through with the story. That's why I'm so excited for for Kiku's flashback, man, and find out more about Kiku Dog. God, this character was just introduced, and I cannot wait to find out more about her, man. I, let me let me go back to exactly what what uh, uh, Sudo said. Uh, Osuru said, um, where is it, 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 I think it was page 7, maybe, okay, page, page 8, let's look at page 8, no, Luffy thought oh, that, that was an awesome chapter, or an awesome uh, part of the chapter, okay, right here, I am also new in this town, and Okiku's only been here for a month, god, man, I don't know, bro, yo, this is, uh, her entire character is just so fascinating after this chapter, man, seriously, so many different implications can happen, man. Oda can connect so many different things and have them happen. And um, and I'll, I'll, I would love any of those scenarios. Any of those scenarios I would love, man. Because Oda's just slowly but surely introducing us to all these characters that are mad important. And uh, I love it, man. So let's go back to, you know, right after Otama with the best birthday ever thing. I, I absolutely loved the best day of my life. That was um, That was so beautiful, dog. You know, taking so many things, it just shows you how many things you take for granted, man. But, um, you know, the amazing, uh, oh, I'm Monkey D. No, no, he's Luffy Taro. He's Luffy Taro. <laughs> he's Oro Jiro and Luffy Taro. And then, um, you know, they eventually we get to find out what the town of Leftovers is. You know, from whenever the government uh, officials took over, uh, the current government officials took over, and they ran everybody out. And that's why this is called the town of Leftovers, because these are the leftovers that they didn't, they no longer wanted. And, um, you know, that where Odin Castle was. Now, I received a comment as well, a couple comments actually telling me that Law and, and his crew are currently in Odin Castle or in the remains of Odin's castle. And, yo, based on the last panel, you guys are right. You guys are right. That's where Law is. And, of course, we know that he's going to go over there towards where Luffy and Zoro are. But, yeah, that's where he is. He's in the remains of, of, of Odin's castle, which is crazy. I wonder, I wonder what he's doing up there. So, um, yeah, over 20 years ago, the Kuzuki clan ruled over the Wano country, as they had been doing for a very long time. And then, uh, but at the base of, of the mountain, there was a vast farm. Now, now The now deceased Lord Odin built so the residents of Kuri could eat delicious food. It was like the food that Orochi and his supporters manipulate. It was a paradise. And then, um, so, we know that Shogun Orochi, of course, owns that farm now. And then, um, we see that these invaders come in. Batman comes in, and like some Bruce Wayne. We have Gazelle Man, uh, stealing Tama. And leaving off with them, that's whenever Kiku goes up in like somewhere, just grabs a blade, takes Komainu, and they start jetting, man. God, dude, I, I want to know so much, bro. And I'm pretty sure we're going to get to find out way more right now whenever we're into the Bakura district. Uh, so right now we're heading right into the Bakura district, which I'm telling you, this thing looks straight out of Roni Kenshin, man. Straight out of Roni Kenshin. And I love this, love this entire page. Master Holden, this gazelle man let go of me as per the reports and captured the girl who turned the baboon. Well done. She should be useful. Yo, Master Hold'em, bro. That's such a beast name. Bring her here. Yes, sir. I mean, she's crying for Luffy. And then, yo, Kiku says, we're breaking in. Luffy, Dado, everyone, let's go in like somewhere. Heading straight into the Bakura district. It's the government officials in the pirates' territory. Let's do this. And they're ready. They're ready to go in like somewhere, man. And I just, and of course, we get to see Law, you know, saying that they're heading into the Bakura district. And, uh, and he's shook. He's like, there's no way he won't cause trouble. Especially when it's those two together, bro. Like, he's, he's talking about Luffy. Just Luffy, dog. This is Luffy and Zoro together, man. So, I'm looking forward to seeing if they're going to reunite or what's going to happen there in that story. But, yo, I'm already extremely, extremely interested on how Oda is going to handle uh, Kiku's story from here on out. And I'm looking forward to seeing now with Hold'em. Looks like Luffy and Zoro are about to go on and take on Master Hold'em here. So this should be our uh, one of our first looks into how this uh, how so, I'm going to I'm going to assume he's pretty high in the in, in the tiers in Kaido's crew if if he's considered one of the three main headliners you know with Speed and with Hawkins so I'm looking forward to seeing what Master Hold'em is going to have in store for us I'm looking forward to seeing if Kiku is going to be the one to take on Hold'em you know how beast that'd be if we get to, if we get to see, see Kiku action and seeing how powerful like she truly is I think that'd be pretty awesome sauce man. And we'll see what happens, yo. I am a samurai, man. God, dude, this 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 arc just continues to get better and better and better, man. Like I said, we've only been in this arc for a couple of chapters. And I am already ex more excited than I was before. I'm finding out the mystery and the history of a One Piece arc, which is my favorite parts of finding out more about the story, man. And I just, 
you know, we the build up for all these years of wanting to find out, you know, more stuff about, about uh, ever since Zoe, about the Kozuki clan, the Pawnee glyphs, and finding out what happened with Gekko Mori and Kaido, and so many different things. You know, Ryuma, the samurai, Odin, everything. And then on top of that, Oda introduces us to characters that we already care about and we want to find out more about, man. Like, I want to find out more about Sudo as well. And then Tama and her story, the Tengu, like, who was the, who was the person the Tengu was waiting for? But then above all that, man, right now, man, the number one thing that I cannot wait to find out more is about Kiku's past because I know it's going to have to be something huge. I know it's going to have to be something connected possibly to the whole Kozuki Odin situation back in the day. Um, it's going to be connected to the Samurai of Wano. It's going to be connected to, to so many different things, man. And I just, I'm just so excited for it because there's so many different possibilities that Oda can take the story. And it gets me extremely, extremely excited, man. I cannot wait, dog. Can't wait for, for next week's chapter. I'm going to see some some Bakura District greatness with Luffy, Zoro, and... Uh, well, I should say Luffy, Taro, Zoro, Judo, Kiku uh, going to go rescue Tama from... Uh, gazelle man batman and master hold them man so i cannot wait for that dog it's 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 gonna be awesome sauce bro it's just wano wano's going so good right now man it, th that that break was tough but whenever we receive this chapter coming off from the break which gives us at least gives me um so much to theorize and speculate and really think about and really ha really has me extremely interested and fascinated and really so extremely invested in these characters that i just met man oda's always been really good at that but whenever you introduce a concept like this, that I've been dying for Oda to tackle, bro. I've been dying for Oda to tackle all of these concepts for so long, bro. Like that that concept I've always I've always, 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 always loved that concept, man. Always, man. I've always loved the concept of somebody having to fake who they are in order to accomplish their goal, man. Like, um, there was this one great book about assassins that I read one time where, where this where this chick had to to um, fake her fake her identity in order to get in. And uh, she ended up being like the strongest out of all of them, you know, and they respected her. So the, so when the time actually came and her identity was revealed, they didn't even care because that's how much clout she had. I, mean, I don't remember the name of the book, but it was a really good book. But, um... And we have a similar situation here that, that we could have with Kiku, bro. So many different implications. They could all mix together. But the whole point I'm trying to get to is, man, I cannot wait to find out more about Kiku. I cannot wait to find out more about Wano, the story behind it. We just keep getting closer and closer and finding out more about the threads and the plot. When we actually get to the Shogun Capital, it's going to pop off, man. It's like all of this is set up. All of this is us continuing to find out more and more about the story, to get more of us in the characters and their own stories and... I just, I can't wait to continue this, this old Wano story, because Oda's had this plan for so long, man. For so long! And it's all coming into fruition, bro. And I just can't wait to find out more, guys. I will see y'all next time. Have an awesome sauce of a day. I wasn't able to go as in-depth as I want to. I have to get going soon, but I wanted to test out the new uh, microphone that I bought. And uh, really, I, want, I really, really, really want to talk about One Piece, yo. So I'll see y'all next time. Have an awesome day. One Piece greatness. Let me know your comments down below and what you guys think about everything in this chapter and your thoughts on the awesome sauce, man. I will see y'all next time. Have an awesome day. One Piece greatness.